we're gonna we're gonna stay here then. Yes, this is this is the design session. Um, so we're having uh, we're having some de uh, technical difficulties with Hopins. We're not able to bring anyone on video, um, which is actually okay because a big portion of this design session is uh, in a Google Doc and uh, is going to be kind of simultaneous group ideation in there. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, our original uh, agenda plan was to start here. Um, together, introduce the workshop, kind of talk through uh, the why behind uh, these design sessions that um, we're going to talk about today. Then part two, moving into a Google Doc exercise, which we will totally still be able to do. Um, part three was a uh, group discussion back uh, together on video. So that one logistically is going to be a little bit uh, harder uh, since we're not able to bring it on. So what I will do is ask um, some pointed questions in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, okay, so design sessions. Uh, thank you so much for joining the session and um, a little bit of context actually why I'm here. Um, oh, yeah, we'll, uh, the, the two of us will stay on video for the first part, but um, otherwise, yeah. Um, so other, so I'm other Ariana actually in uh, in the context of this event, which has been awesome because I'm not used to meeting uh, other Arianas very often, especially with two ends. Um, but I got the opportunity to meet Ariana a um, few months ago through an introduction. And um, our introduction was that she was invited to one of these design sessions that I was hosting. And uh, the purpose of uh, the design sessions is essentially to capture the collective knowledge of the group on a given topic. Um, and so actually this concept was something that uh, was incubated um, uh, within my company. Uh, so I, I run a company called Matchbox that um, hosts virtual events and virtual conferences. And um, especially during the COVID period, we had so many teams that were independently trying to solve very similar challenges. And so um, we wanted to look for ways to bring the group together, kind of encourage cross-pollination of ideas. Um, we also knew that uh, because there were so many groups independently solving for different things that, um, you know, they were all coming up with these awesome ideas. And so we wanted a way, a way for the group to kind of share those concepts. So we created a um, uh, actually an all team virtual conference for ourselves. Very meta, you know, taking a uh, dose of our own medicine. And uh, one of the session topics we were going to discuss uh, virtual networking. You know, this was something that we were experimenting, you know, a lot of different modes and ways to do this. And so we had set 25 minutes to have this discussion. And uh, I kind of realized, you know, if I'm going to be up there talking for 25 minutes, that's not a very uh, enticing discussion, you know, with the group. And so instead, I drafted up a series of questions and uh, in a Google Doc and created a, a table for each question on the list um, and shared the doc with everyone. And so, you know, we, uh, for 25 minutes, we were all in there together working on this Google doc. And um, the most important aspect of the doc was um, uh, in answering the questions, a yes and column where people could kind of spark new ideas from what was being shared and, um, uh, you know, plus one or encourage uh, digging a little further into the topic. And so what happened in that period of time, in that 25 minutes, was 16 pages of these really good ideas all around this topic of virtual networking. And going back to the document was fascinating going through it, realizing, first of all, that there were um, so many voices that I hadn't heard in the same way uh, or in a in a different medium. You know, one team member, for instance, uh, she's very shy and uh, she was doing live event support and she was in so many of our events and she had a uh, psychology degree actually. So she was looking at what we were doing in such a, a different way. And so I saw, you know, looking at this document, um, I, I was so impressed with the ideas that she shared that later, um, actually she, um, 
it led to doing some special projects uh, within the company. And so kind of realized the, the power of the medium, you know, I, speaking for myself sometimes in events, um, I'm much more comfortable writing comments in a chat rather than speaking out loud, especially if it's a, a really big group. Um, so, uh, so these design sessions, um, first we were using them internally within our own teams and, um, uh, and, and over time we started to refine the, uh, program a little bit. So what would happen in these design sessions, they'd be set up in three parts. The first part, uh, uh, kind of introductions, setting the stage, talking about creative constraints, that kind of thing. Part two, this group ideation that I was um, explaining with the document and, and uh, what we're going to do is actually go into a doc and do this uh, ideation together for a specific challenge. And then the third, um, uh, the third part, actually, what we would find with uh, all these ideas that were being generated is that there were so many opportunities to dig in deeper. So people would um, share these ideas that, you know, you could totally see a group coming together and, and uh, um, uh, problem solving even deeper. So what we started to do in this part three was create uh, breakout rooms. So the people that were participating in the Google Doc, um, we would then um, pair people into ideally groups of four we found was the right uh, number for those uh, breakout rooms. And then uh, often they would get a uh, either a second set of questions or essentially they were being asked to, to hone their ideas, get more specific. Um, and then at the end, bring everyone back and pitch their ideas. And so this is a format that um, we've refined over time. We saw in doing this internally with our own teams and, and honestly implementing so many different ideas across the company as a result, uh, we've started to use it also with our clients. Um, so we invite our clients, uh, especially if, if we see that there's a uh, common challenge that several of them are facing, we'll pull together a design session and we get a ton of ideas um, definitely on the product side, um, we get a ton of um, user feedback very, very quickly with this kind of thing. And what's really neat about it is that uh, if it if it works well, it's the energy that emerges out of it ends up being applied um, in really cool ways. You know, we'll have clients that will write with all these other ideas, for instance, um, that came out of uh, out of that early session. So Ariana asked me uh, to come and, and explain the design sessions. And so I thought that it, it might be fun to, to try one, <laughs> to do one uh, together as a group. And so originally, um, I just came back actually from a uh, three day road trip from New Orleans to Vermont, which is a 26 hour drive. And my hair is still wet because I arrived 10 minutes before this uh, <laughs> Before this session started, um, mostly because of a school bus that I, I had timed it perfectly, but there was a school bus in the last few minutes. Um, and so uh, in the car, hot spotted, I was uh, I was looking back at the design session that uh, I had originally crafted and it was very serious. Um, and then I think because of being on the road and um, uh, and, and having the van life experience that I just had, I decided to pivot the design session a little bit. So... Um, I'm going to, I'm scared to try anything on here. I'm going to share my screen and cross my fingers that it, uh, that it works. Um, so what we're going to do next is, um, move into this, uh, Google doc together, start working, answering questions. Um, and, uh, I will put a timer for us, uh, a timer of, 15 minutes, although if everyone's still going in the doc, we might go a little bit longer. Um, normally also in the document, I would um, share uh, music at the same time. There are uh, a ton of playlists, by the way, on uh, YouTube for um, royalty-free. That part is important in many cases, royalty-free uh, instrumental music. And uh, that's great, especially on Zoom calls, let's say, where you have many people. It's like, it can be kind of awkward when you go into the Google Doc and people are typing and they have their like, you know, serious thinking faces. So we turn on the music to kind of cut that, uh, cut that awkwardness, but it's just us. So um, it won't, uh, won't be the case. So I'm going to 
Let's see, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, and I can share the Google Docs whenever you're ready. If Let me know if you wanna do two or one. Yeah. Um, just one for sure. And um, if you could paste it in there. Um, and uh, the reason she asked me the question about the uh, number of documents is because uh, you'll find, you'll see with the exercise, if there are too many people doing it at once, it, it can actually start to be a little bit chaotic. The uh, columns move too quickly. So my rule of thumb, I shoot for maximum uh, 15 to 20 people. Oh, there's a lot in here. Oh, the, the viewer number. Oh, I'm talking to, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going total chaos here. I'm trying to get back to you. Okay. Pivot. We're, I didn't realize how many people are in here. The number isn't um, uh, okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go multiple documents here. We're gonna actually go. Um, let's see. We are eighty-three here, so we are going to do four documents. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to. Um, are you able, Samanti, to? Um, copy and create new documents. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, we're going to shoot for about 20 in each. And um, so we need to divide the group into four, essentially. So if your birthday is January, February, March, you are in document one, April, May, June, document two, July, August, September, document three, October, November, December, whoa, uh, document four. So we will all uh, be in there simultaneously. We'll see how this goes. I've actually never done one um, with a group this big before. So um, that's cool. Thank you all for coming to this, uh, to this session. Um, and okay, so the way that this works, uh, so this, this question here, um, about uh, the golf cart. So this was this was actually inspired in part because of this road trip I was on, but also in part because um, a, a year ago I got into a huge debate with a friend on whether or not it was legal to do and like legal and possible. So let's just assume yes to both. Um, so our uh, our design session challenge here today is um, how might uh, Ariana Squared, so uh, Ariana Rahak is my name, Ariana Black is the other, and together we are Ariana Squared. Um, how might uh, Ariana Squared be best prepared for a cross-country golf cart road trip? So the reason um, for choosing uh, a specific topic uh, is that it tends to be easier to get people to, to wrap their heads around it if there's a um, very specific case study or something of the like that, uh, that people are solving against. And so generally it's a broader topic and then um, there are certain questions to consider. So usually depending on the timing, I find about um, uh, six to eight questions to be the, the right amount. And so each of these questions is actually, um, uh, you can move forward along to an associated table. And um, each, so each question you'll see here, we're asking you to put your name next to the idea, uh, what your idea is, and then there's this yes and column. So I had asked Samanti and one of my team members, Nina, to start um, writing in the document in advance. And so we have a few ideas here. Um, and this document, it's totally a choose your own adventure. So um, you'll see there are lots of questions and um, you know you may uh, wanna ideate for every single question. You might want to, you know, there might be one that really speaks out to you. Um, and uh, we also, I find that some people, actually myself included, totally prefer to hang out in that yes and column um, responding. So um, uh, in order to uh, respond to one of the yes ands, you can just, maybe I wanna, maybe I wanna affirm my own idea and smiley face. So, um, any questions before uh, before we begin? And um, Samanti and I will actually go off uh, camera for this next piece because uh, so we're not self-conscious of our thinking faces. 
Um, and uh, we're about to post, this was uh, the first doc. And um, Samanti, do you have the links for? I've shared it on the chat. Oh, time. beautiful. All the links? Oh, nice. I'm so glad I have you. Thank you so much for all your help. <laughs> really appreciate you. Um, so any, oh, you're not able to edit. Uh, number, so number three and four, the um, editing permissions have to be made. Um, I have updated that already. Um, yep, exactly. One idea per row, but the yes ands very often, um, you know, that's, uh, that's infinite. Those uh, sometimes go back and forth quite a bit. Okay, three is now editable, awesome. I think she's uh, working on four. Oh, that's fun, I already see people. Uh, See people typing. Yeah, I would say if anyone's having trouble um, editing number three, just jump into number one. Yeah, I see people are in there typing now. Yeah. So head on over to number one if um, yours doesn't work in one of the other documents. And we're going to pull everybody back at uh, the 35 mark.
in the hop in chat, I'm adding a, the link to the fourth doc. If you're in number one, because there are a lot more people in number one, if you're finding um, that it's lagging for you too much, feel free uh, to move over into another one. And yeah, link in the fourth one is uh, in the chat.
now. Okay. We are going to start in uh, about one minute. So if you want to finish your last thought, Samanti and I will come back on video and I have some questions uh, in the chat for you. Well, I will have some questions in the chat for you, I should say. <laughs> All right, we're gonna come back now. Samanti, if you will join me on video, thank you so much. Some facial uh, facial reactions as I speak, I, uh, I appreciate that. Um, thank you, thank you all for experimenting um, with, uh, with this design session. I hope you enjoyed it. It was interesting. I was going um, across the different documents the entire time and it was really interesting to see uh, the different behaviors a little bit. You know, there were some documents, for instance, that had a little more yes anding going on uh, than others. So it was, was kind of neat to see. Um, so what I, uh, what I will share is this exercise, actually, this golf cart exercise. Um, originally, I had my team do it for fun about a year ago. And so that was, uh, that was part of the reason why I wanted to try it today. And we did it actually in uh, two parts. And the first part was... Um, a lot like this, where everybody was um, writing in the document and, and answering questions. And one of the very first questions that was asked to the group was, um, you know, what are some challenges, logistics, things to consider? And so the group um, at that point, I think together, you know, there were like 20 or 30 considerations really, uh, really quickly. And so with those, we created um, the next part with the uh, um, breakout rooms. And so actually I have the document so I can give you an example of that piece. If we had time today, I totally would have uh, put everybody in breakout rooms to start doing the exercise. Um, but, uh, okay, I'm gonna go back to screen share. Okay, so, um, when uh, when everybody was ideating, we realized that um, we could categorize the different responses that were given. So we created the breakout rooms. Um, you know, the first one, time management bandwidth. The second one, um, the route. You know, what is that trip actually going to look like? Uh, <laughs> we had a team look at uh, the legality and safety. As you can tell by the numbers, that was the least interesting. Um, and then we had a few other kind of fun ones. And so um, I'll, I'll, uh, in each room, they all answered uh, these questions and then came back and kind of presented to us. Unfortunately, the first group that insisted on presenting was legal to tell us that there was no way that uh, we were actually going to be able to make to pull it off, to make it happen. So. Um, we will not, uh, we will not have a breakout room on, uh, <laughs> looking at the legal side ever again for this activity. Um, okay. So I would like to ask you, um, some questions. Um, yeah, absolutely. Aviva, if you'd like a copy of that, um, second exercise, I actually, um, as a uh, handout for everybody, I actually have a PDF that explains how to do design sessions that also has a template that you can use yourself. So that one might be a little bit easier to use uh, if you want to try this out. Um, what I beg from everybody is if you do use it, I really want to know how it goes. Uh, it's fun to hear all of the, um, uh, you know, all of the stories of the design sessions out in the world. So I would love that. And I will give you my email so you can share that with me. Um, and share me your documents. I love to see your documents. But uh, okay, so I have some questions for everybody. So I'm going to put them in the chat. 
Um, my first question, having uh, for those who just went through this whole exercise, I'm really curious. Um, what do you think about this idea? Do you think that uh, uh, Ariana and Ariana should go on this golf cart adventure? So um, tell us in the chat. Yeah, we have some uh, have some likes already. That's a good sign. Um, I feel like uh, anyone who's typing right now might be typing a long thing to be like, here are all the problems with this idea. Um, yes, start small to make sure the golf cart doesn't die on you. Yes, that is a really good call. Maybe uh, we'll start with a single state and then see how it goes. Um, Denise, cheers to you. That was exactly, um, so what prompted it originally was um, in New Orleans, there was a golf cart where they had left the keys. And my friend and I were like, what if we take this golf cart? Like, what would we do with it? And then it just sort of escalated from there. And then we were planning this, uh, this cross country adventure. Um, yes, Crystal, that, <laughs> that answers the, the golf cart question. Um, okay. So, um, next, uh, next question for you. So now that, uh, now that you've done this exercise, um, I will tell you, just give you another example of a design session in use. Um, the original one that I was going to use for today was um, kind of hearing everybody's collective thoughts on what some of your big takeaways were um, from the conference itself. So uh, I find that that ends up being a really efficient way of note taking <laughs> when there's a group of people, um, especially. So we all just had this amazing experience of the conference, and I'm sure that there were some um, eureka takeaways, that kind of thing that you plan on uh, implementing down the road. So those types of questions work really well for design sessions where everybody is going to um, gain value from hearing each other's answers. Um, another example of a softball design session question would be, um, you know, do you have book recommendations, let's say? Usually, you know, questions that are, are easy to answer. Um, and uh, then you get the yes ending of, oh, yeah, I read that book. And that reminds me of, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, OK, so next next question for you kind of relatedly. Actually, it looked like the chat um, starting to go in this uh, um, in this um, direction. But uh, can you think of use cases for running design sessions like this? So I'm curious. Um, can you use this for brainstorming sessions uh, to generate solution options? Um, great, uh, great question, Crystal. I, I, so I'm not a product manager, um, so I, I actually don't know what uh, uh, generation solution option is. Um, Samanti, do you? Oh, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, so essentially, like it's it's the part of the uh, product management process where you, uh, you know, like think through the problem statement and then for each problem statement, come up with like what are the different solutions uh, that will solve the problem statement, right? Like what feature you want to build and like that type of thing. So I think that's what the question is related to. Gotcha. Yes, 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 absolutely. And um, it's interesting because now that my team has been invited to different um, uh, design sessions over time, they've started to use it as a tool. Absolutely. When they're stuck, I, I saw that note in the chat, um, stuck on their work in some way, and they just want to very quickly get the feedback of other people. Um, and, uh, it just, uh, it, the other, I, I found by the way, numbers wise, even literally two of us, in a design session document together going back and forth and doing it through chat, um, even that works. So I just did it, for instance, one of my, uh, we have a new member of the team who joined and um, we have her roles and responsibilities laid out. And so we actually did a design session where we took every bullet point as one of the rows and together we were each kind of writing comments, you know, some of the bullet points, for instance, she was saying like, oh, I would love to take an online course to learn a little bit more how to, you know, hone this skill. And um, for some of them, she was saying like, oh, I've, I feel like I haven't uh, been able to dig into this one as much because I've been so busy with other things. So it's just actually a really, um, uh, and, and sometimes we, we found it easier in writing to say things that were sometimes a little harder to say. 
um, verbally. So yeah, it's been a, a great tool for us. Totally recommend it. Um, nice to see in the chat all of these uh, different ideas um, for how to use it. Uh, so with uh, a minute left, I'm sorry that it's only a minute left, but um, do you have uh, any, uh, so if you're, you're here watching this thinking, oh, this would be uh, something I wanna try out with my team or um, in your context, um, do you have any questions for, for me about uh, the logistics of how to run them? So Monty, because you're on camera, I'm gonna put you on the spot and ask you first. Yeah, yeah I, I have a question actually. So on the questions to consider, like just wearing my product manager hat, I feel like the questions to consider is like sort of the backbone of this because that's where you derive the structure and you're forcing people to think about those questions. Um, like what's the best way to think about the questions to consider, especially when you are, you know, probably like trying a solution for a, like a very complex, like problem space or product. That's a, that's a really great question. Um, I've often uh, thought about it in different contexts. And what I would say is, you know, it's really helpful to have a first question that's broader and all of the others kind of sub questions to it. Um, one thing to keep in mind with the medium is that you're the answers to the question or sorry, the, the questions to consider. Um, for starters, you want to avoid anything where there are right and wrong answers. Like this is about, um, you know, divergent perspectives and ideas. Um, so that's one thing. The other is keeping in mind the medium. It's like bite-sized pieces of answers, if that makes sense. So if it's something that takes a little bit too long to answer, um, it might not be the right fit for that setting. One thing that I do as a way to test out my own questions is I'll go and try to answer them myself. And uh, if I find either I'm having trouble ideating or um, my answer is just too big, then um, you know I'll move on to another question. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at the time or minute over. I'm gonna spend a few minutes starting to answer, but you know, I, I uh, imagine there's something else going. So totally understand um, if you uh, if you head out and thank you for joining this workshop. Um, so I'm going to scroll up and find the start of the questions. Okay, the yes and part. Yes. So so Caitlin. Um, the yes anding, that's actually a concept that comes from improv and um, uh, where if somebody brings an idea to the table, yes anding is building off of that idea. So one of the reasons for positioning it as a yes and is um, because it's discouraging people from saying things that are shooting down the idea. So imagine somebody says an idea and then somebody else is like, no, I don't think that's going to work. It's not going to encourage um, that ideation. And so the, the yes ending is purely about responding to the idea, either affirming it in some way or, um, you know, sometimes that will remind uh, someone else of something or, or spark a, a related idea. Um, and actually, when building breakout rooms, one thing, if, um, if I have the time to do it, I'll pay attention to who's yes anding each other, because it's an indication that um, they might uh, do really well in a room to continue uh, that interaction that starts there. All right, next question. How can we tweak this for design sessions with product engineers, UX, et cetera, where you're solutioneering around something specific? So I'm going to think about yes. So um, what I would say to that is that the uh, format of the uh, that first part with the questions to consider, it very much encourages kind of divergent thinking and ideas, which is a really good way of warming things up, which is one of the reasons why um, that second part of uh, putting people into the breakout rooms, that tends to be where that convergence happens a little bit more. So in this context, you know, one of the ways that that first part could be used is to get everybody kind of thinking actively about um, the problem that's being solved for. And maybe the breakout rooms, you're starting to go into the specifics of how to solve for it. Um, I find that this first part can do a really good job of building empathy for um, that problem solving, or even a question like, what will it look like? Um, you know, what are the benefits of solving this problem? Let's say even that kind of stuff gets people thinking in that way. 
um, in that early part. And then um, with the ideas flowing, it tends to be easier um, to get the groups going in, in the breakouts. They already have that first place to start. Um, all right, what do you normally do with the information at the end of the session? So that will totally depend. Um, in an exercise like this, you know, it was, uh, it was just for fun. Uh, in other contexts, though, um, very often the reason we're bringing the group together is because we actively want to solve for um, something specific. So in our case, because we are virtual conference producers, the questions that we were asking were actually driving toward different session format ideas or um, you know, different uh, experiences that we were trying to build. So for instance, we did a design session on um, what a new member onboarding experience uh, might look like. And so uh, another example was um, uh, how might we build a user group community event? And so the goal at the end of it was to come out and say, hey, here's a suggested, here's kind of the best of um, that came out of this and here's what we wanna move forward on. I will say um, some of our clients have started to use these um, to problem to facilitate collaborative problem solving in their specific context as well. So, for instance, we just held an event uh, with psychiatrists looking at mental health in correctional facilities, and the goal was to actually lead to um, project suggestions solving for um, specific issues that emerged, and they. Um, uh, they had a, a partnership with a group actually funding some of these projects to move forward, which uh, which was really cool. Um, that hits a little bit, Lana, on um, what to do after. Um, I find uh, the person, very often the person that initiates the design session and starts to, to um, uh, put together the questions, tends to be the right uh, person to lead the charge on making sure there's real follow-up. Um, one of the dangers is that, you know, you end up with 25 pages of ideas and then it's like, okay, well, what, uh, you know, everyone's excited and then that's kind of it. Um, but I, I find um, uh, it depends on on the context, but the the person that that starts it really should drive it through to, okay, here are the, um, you know, here's what we should do next. One of the reasons it's actually hard to predict what that looks like specifically is because you just never know what the group is going to come up with. Um, I find very often uh, one way to help me think it through is to open up a separate document and do a takeaways piece from what I just read to help synthesize um, that, that ends with uh, next steps. And because this exercise brought people together, it's easier to get the buy-in from others that that next step makes sense uh, to pursue. Uh, okay, with so many different ideas, which ones do you pick and how? So yeah, that will that will totally depend um, on the context and and uh, what's being solved for. And and again, I recommend. <laughs> the organizer of the design session um, kind of leading leading that charge. We've done things, for instance, where you know, five ideas were pulled out and then we did a poll. You know, which one are we, which initiative are we going to actually pursue um, internally, for instance? Time duration. Um, which, uh, what would be time duration you'd suggest for the sessions? So that's a great question. Um, from start to finish, the intro, the um, ideation in the document, and the uh, breakout rooms, all of that, if a group is doing it for the first time um, and the group is under 10 people, you can pull that off in a 60 minute block usually. Um, I find if it's a larger group than that, especially if this concept is new, um, ideally you want it to be a little bit longer, like 75 minutes. Um, practically speaking though, 60 minutes usually um, is the the uh, is the right amount because 75 minutes starts to be a little bit harder for people to schedule logistically. Um, total group size. Yes. Next question will be the total group size, which would run this efficiently. Um, so I this was the largest I've ever um, 
uh, done this with, which uh, it was such a last minute thought to duplicate the documents. So I'm, I'm glad Samanti and I um, worked on that a little beforehand. But uh, I would say my sweet spot, my favorite number to do this with is 15 people. Um, anything below that, um, well, anything, anything between any number between five and 15 or 20, you're going to get a natural flow. Um, anything above that number, it starts to get a little bit chaotic in the document, which is when I recommend completing a single document and then literally duplicating it and dividing the group in half. Um, uh, and once people are familiar with the design session format, like I said, I've found value even in, you know, two people doing it together at the same time. Um, okay. You, y'all know when you write a PRD or an initiative doc, you often have an open question section. I'm going to, exp oh, cool. Going to experiment with popping those into this type of session. That's awesome. Please tell me how that goes. <laughs> Um, yes. So the next point was from Samanti. If you'd like to receive the, that, uh, PDF along with the template, um, I included my email address for you here. Uh, I think, uh, Ariana had mentioned that that had been uploaded in here as a handout. Uh, I couldn't find it. So if it is a handout, that's also another way, but I'm super happy to send it, uh, to everybody. Okay. Um, so, all right, I'm just scrolling down quickly. I have kept you 10 minutes longer. Thank you so much for everybody um, who's here. Samanti, thank you for, uh, I, I definitely don't know how, how I would have done this without you. Um, and uh, cheers to everyone. I hope you're enjoying your conference and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Thank you so much. It was a great session. Bye, everybody. Yeah.